So, hi there, hello tubers, what's up? So today now I have been working on the slipper clutch unit. So now you can see the slipper clutch unit is completely disassembled. So I am planning to install the slipper clutch on my 180, RTO 180. So this slipper clutch is from Apache RTO 200. So I am going to replace my old uh, normal clutch unit into slipper clutch unit. So for that I am going to use uh, RTO 200 slipper clutch unit. So I hope it is a direct fit because of the same design of the engine. So now you can see that I have completely disassembled the slipper clutch so that you can easily understand what is going on inside the slipper clutch. So here you can see there are a fine number of clutch plates and fine number of pressure plates. So these are the clutch plates and pressure plates you can see. So there are totally 10 plates inside the slipper clutch unit and there will be a ring. So and you can see there are springs there. There are only three springs in the slipper clutch unit. When compared to the conventional clutch unit, we have four, four springs. So because of the three springs, the clutch lever action will be very lighter. So that's the first advantage of installing slipper clutch. And the next thing you can see is that uh, the spring holder, spring holder ring and spring holder notch. So that's it. So there's the sli uh, slipper clutch unit. So this is how the slipper clutch differs from the normal clutch. So here you can see the inclined surface. So this is the one which let you to down shoot your bike without uh, pulling the clutch lever. So this is how it happens. So I'm going to explain you how that happens. So in the normal clutch plate, you can't see these kind of inclined surfaces. So if your clutch, uh, if your clutch hub has uh, these kind of inclined surfaces, then it must be slipper clutch. So here you can see this is how the clutch action works. So whenever the clutch unit, that is the top portion and the bottom portion expands, which means that it is disconnecting the power transmission between engine and transmission. So Whenever this unit expands, it's gonna cut the transmission between the engine and the ex engine and the transmission unit. That is the gearbox. So now imagine that you are uh, riding your bike at uh, fourth or fifth gear in 100 kilometers an hour. So now you have an accident to downshift your bike without pulling the clutch lever. So in normal bikes, the engine braking will happen. So if you have not uh, pull your clutch while downshifting. So engine braking will happen, which results in damaging your piston, cylinder walls and the connecting rod, which is not good for an engine. So that's the place where you need a slipper clutch. So I'm going to explain you that how slipper clutch saves you from harmful engine braking. So now imagine that you are riding your motorcycle and your motorcycle is equipped with a slipper clutch unit. So now you have accidentally downshifted your bike at higher speeds without pulling the clutch lever. So this is what happened. Your rear wheel will be spinning faster than your engine. So now you, now you have to remember that this top portion is connected to the rear wheel and this bottom portion is connected to the engine. So you have to remember that. So in between them, there will be number of gears. So if I try to explain that, it will confuse you. Now just remember that this top portion is connected to the rear wheel and this bottom portion is connected to the engine. So this is how both of them has been engaged with the springs and the clutch unit. So now at this position, the clutch, uh, the engine and the transmission is engaged, which means that the engine power is transmitted to the gearbox, that is to the rear wheel. So now the now the bike is now the clutch unit is now the clutch unit is spinning. The bike is running. Now if you accidentally downshift uh, your bike without pulling the clutch lever, so this is what happened. Your rear wheel will be running faster than your engine so whenever that happens so this is what happened both of them were rotating at different speeds so the engine portion is rotating at lower speed and the rear wheel is rotating at higher speed so this is what happened so the rear wheel will restrict the engine power so whenever it happens it will expand itself so like this because the top portion is connected to the rear wheel so because of the speed variation between the engine and the rear wheel this is what happened it will tends to expand the clutch unit slipper clutch hub so it will expand with the help of uh, this inclined surface so whenever uh, both of them were running at a non synchronous speed that is uh, different speeds so this is what happened it will expand the clutch hub like this so whenever this uh, both of them were expanded it will cut the transmission between the engine and the rear wheel that is the engine and the gearbox so as a result it will be like pulling your clutch so this is what happened whenever you downshift your bike in a slipper clutch unit so, so when both of them were uh, rotating at same speed there will be nothing will be problem so whenever both of them has not been synchronized or running at different speeds so this is what happened so 
the rear wheel will uh, restrict the movement of the engine so as a result it will expand itself so when both of them were riding at same speed nothing will happen when both of them try to run at different speeds this will the speed variation of the clutch unit also differs so as a result because of this inclined surface they will expand themselves like this so whenever this happens it will be like pulling a clutch lever so which means that your the clutch unit is expanding so as a result it will be equivalent to pulling the clutch lever and the power transmission between the engine and the rear wheel will be disconnected after that whenever both of them are synchronized this will again come into its normal position because of the springs so then again clutch will be engaged and your ride will continue on so because of this unit you can save your engine walls that is the cylinder walls pistons piston rings and the connecting rod also valves so it is always good to install sleeper clutch on your non sleeper clutch motorcycle which is a good thing so i have completely disassembled them so that i can explain you about the working principle of sleeper clutch so this is how the sleeper clutch on every motorcycle works so i have got this sleeper clutch unit for about, for around 2025 rupees so if you are planning to install it in your tvs apache or tr non sleeper clutch motorcycle non sleeper clutch model you can do that but you have to completely buy this assembly that is complete unit uh, now you can see the part number here so this is the part number and this is the price of this complete clutch unit so what i am planning is that i am going to install it on my rtr 180 so i hope that i can install that so after installing that i will share you the separate video about that how to install that so i hope it will be a direct fit so so that's all about the sleeper clutch so if you want me to cover something just let me know i will read your each and every comments so until then subscribe to my channel more interesting vlogs are coming soon so uh, currently i am having a problem with my laptop so that's why i can't uh, make videos now i have come i have covered lot of videos but i can't edit them so please give me some time so we'll install it soon on my bike so i have completed about 4000 kilometers on my bike from my previous oil change within a week i will install this during my next oil change so while installing that i will just cover up all the things in my video so what are the things you need what are the things you don't need and uh, what are the changes you have to make while installing it so that's it about it thank you for watching subscribe to my channel have a good day